class is in session. Hello students, welcome back to Clever Fox Academy. I'm Professor Volpes, and today's lesson subject is science. Do you all like spicy foods? I don't know about you, but I never turn down a buffalo wing. However, there's only so much spice I can handle before I chicken out. Yet, there are lots of people out there that like to eat the hottest substances on the planet, whether it be for medical reasons, possible internet fame, or just because they enjoy it. But, some of these peppers can get ridiculously spicy. We've all seen the videos on YouTube of random thrill seekers boldly sampling the notorious ghost pepper and then immediately regretting it. Oh, f*** that. Oh my god, horrible. Tell us! I can't talk. <laughs> I'm actually tearing up, oh! My entire face! My face! Oh dog, come on. <sighs> Oh my this sucks. It's hilarious. We all like to laugh as their eyes start to water and they fan their tongues and scream that their mouths are on fire. But what kind of symptoms are we not seeing? Can the effects of extreme spice be a lot worse than we think? Can they be potentially dangerous or deadly? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. Here are your key terms for today's lesson. Chili pepper, the fruit of plants from the genus Capsicum. Capsaicin the active component in chili peppers that give the pepper its spice. Scoville heat scale, a measurement of the pungency of chili peppers and other spicy foods. Got all that? Then let's begin! Coming from the plant genus Capsicum, people have been eating chili peppers since 7500 BCE and are native to Central and South America. They were some of the very first plants to be domesticated and cultivated as a food. They were introduced to Asia in the 1500s and rapidly became a staple of the spice trade. Nowadays, they are a key ingredient in many different types of cuisine all around the world, very regularly eaten in countries such as Mexico, China, and India, which is the leading producer of chili peppers on the planet. What is it that makes things like chili peppers so hot? When you think about it, if you go to the grocery store and pick up a jalapeno, it doesn't burn your skin. So what gives? Well, what gives a pepper its spice is actually a chemical in the pepper called 8 methyl n vanillyl 6 nonanamide. But, for simplicity's sake, we'll call it by its common name, capsaicin. A pepper's spice level is determined by measuring the concentration of capsaicin, and is ranked on something called the Scoville Heat Scale. The heat scale was created in 1912 by a man named Wilbur Scoville, who would test a pepper spice by grinding them up, mixing them into sugar water, and having people taste them. Then, he would dilute the spicy sugar water until the mixture no longer burned. Once the pepper is tested, it is given a certain number of Scoville heat units. For example, regular bell peppers have no capsaicin in them, and therefore rank a zero on the scale, while more well-known peppers like the habanero can clock in at around 325,000 Scoville heat units. The pepper to currently hold the official record of the hottest pepper in the world is called the Carolina Reaper, and can average at 1.6 million heat units, topping the scale at 2.2 million. When a pepper is ingested, the capsaicin oils bind to certain nerves in your mouth called TRPV1 receptors, which are located in an area called the pain channel. These receptors are also appropriately known as capsaicin receptors. When the capsaicin chemical binds with these receptors, they essentially fool your brain into thinking that your mouth is burning, and the higher the concentration of capsaicin in a pepper, the more intense the burning sensation will feel. After the pain receptors trigger, your brain is going to immediately take corrective action to remove the toxin and alleviate the pain. You'll start to sweat, your eyes will start to water, and your nose will start to run. Capsaicin can also activate certain neurons in the diaphragm which can spark an intense case of the hiccups. As the pepper makes its way into the digestive system, it can cause other not-so-great side effects such as indigestion, stomach cramps, nausea, diarrhea, and more. So, how hot can certain foods get? Well, like I said before, the current record holder for the hottest pepper is the Carolina Reaper, which can rank up to 2.2 million on the Scoville heat scale. While this is currently the official world's hottest pepper, there are actually two more peppers that could beat out the Reaper as the hottest. First up is called Dragon's Breath, which was first grown in Nottinghamshire in the United Kingdom, and ranks at nearly 2.5 million Scoville heat units. The next and potentially the hottest pepper in existence is called Pepper X. Pepper X was actually cultivated by the person who first bred and grew the Carolina Reaper, known as Smokin' Ed Curry. Very little is currently known about Pepper X, but it's said to possibly reach over 3 million Scoville heat units. However, neither of these peppers have been confirmed as the hottest by the Guinness Book of World Records, so for now, the Carolina Reaper still holds the title. 
Can things get any hotter than the legendary Pepper X? Oh, absolutely. In fact, in the time since I finished writing this script in September of 2019, Ed Curry, who brought us the Reaper and Pepper X, created an entirely new pepper by crossbreeding these two peppers. This tongue-searing fruit has been dubbed the Apollo Pepper. Its ranking on the Scoville heat scale is currently unknown, but given its parent peppers, it's pretty safe to say that it has massive potential to kick the Carolina Reaper off of its throne. The Apollo was revealed to the public by Sean Evans, host of the popular YouTube series Hot Ones. During his reveal of the sauce lineup for the show's 13th season, he revealed an all-new edition of their signature sauce, The Last Dab, which was made with the Apollo pepper. Oh, look at that! That gave me the perfect segue into our next topic of the video. It's time to enter the scorching world of hot sauces. Hot sauce is a very common condiment found in almost every restaurant and grocery store you can think of. And just like peppers, they can each have different heat levels. Basic hot sauce is made by mixing together salt, vinegar, and chili peppers. However, different ingredients can be added to the sauce to give it a higher concentration of capsaicin, and therefore give it a spicier flavor. My favorite hot sauce, Frank's Red Hot, hashtag not sponsored, chimes in at only 450 on the Scoville heat scale, but hot sauces can get much hotter than that. Other well-known sauces like Tabasco or Sriracha can range anywhere from 2,000 to 7,000 on the scale. And with enough tampering, these sauces can reach astronomical heat levels. One example is the Source Hot Sauce, which clocks in at an astounding 7.1 million Scoville units. Other novelty foods have been created to be extremely spicy as well, such as the Toe of Satan Lollipop, which ranks at 9 million on the scale. Capsaicin extract is also used in certain defense weapons, such as pepper spray, which can reach up to 5 million units in certain law enforcement grade sprays. Surely it can't get any hotter than that. Oh, my dear students, it absolutely can. The spiciest substance in existence is pure capsaicin extract, which sits at the top of the Scoville heat scale at a volcanic 16 million Scoville heat units. So, as you can see, hot sauces can get ridiculously hot. There are even some restaurants that serve exceptionally hot sauce on buffalo wings that require their customers to sign a waiver before they let them order their wings. So we've been talking about some pretty spicy foods. So now it's time to answer the question that this entire lesson is asking. Are spicy foods really dangerous? Well, the best answer that I can give is that they have the potential to be, but it is rather unlikely. How much heat can one person handle? Well, there's really no set answer to that. Different people have different spice tolerances, and it can depend on a number of factors, from genetics to frequent spice consumption. However, the hotter the peppers are, the more intense the symptoms that were listed earlier in this video will be. Depending on the level of capsaicin in the pepper consumed, the symptoms can last for a long time, with some lasting up to 18 hours after eating the pepper. Once a pepper ranks beyond 1 million on the heat scale, they are classified as super hot chili peppers. And yes, that is the actual classification. These are the peppers that can produce the most severe effects. While rare, extremely hot peppers can cause temporary but severe and unusual medical problems. One man was hospitalized with sporadic and intense headaches after eating a Carolina Reaper. Doctors found that the arteries in his brain were very constricted, causing the painful headaches. Another hot pepper story, this time a ghost pepper, came out of San Francisco, where a man who had eaten one of the peppers ended up tearing a hole in his esophagus after the pepper caused him to severely vomit. All of these after effects of peppers sound pretty terrible. So how do you make them stop if you've eaten a spicy pepper? Well, the best remedy, honestly, is to just wait it out until the capsaicin works through your system. However, you can help temporarily alleviate some of the pain by drinking milk. Milk and other dairy products have a protein in them called casein. Casein helps neutralize the burning effect capsaicin has in your mouth. This is why it's common for restaurants to serve their buffalo wings with ranch or blue cheese dressing. Of course, that's just one of many different ways that you can counteract intense spice. Matt Pat from Game Theory actually released a video on his channel, The Food Theorist, that really broke down how capsaicin affects your body and the best ways to combat the heat. I'll put a link in the description amongst the sources used in this video. I highly recommend giving it a look. This leads to one final burning question, pun intended. Can spicy peppers kill you? Well, the simplest answer is yes, they can. However, the good news is that it would take a whole lot of peppers to have a lethal effect on a person. 
According to some studies, a fatal dose of capsaicin is 100 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight. So, for an averagely weighted adult, it would require well over 30 Carolina Reapers to prove deadly. So fortunately, it's very unlikely for a fully grown adult to die from eating peppers. However, capsaicin can still have a lethal effect on young children, as made clear by an unfortunate event in 2001 where an 8-month-old child suffered a heart attack and died due to capsaicin poisoning after being given chili powder as a form of traditional medicine. All of that sounds pretty scary, so why even bother with capsaicin in the first place? Well, believe it or not, capsaicin also provides a number of health benefits. Chili peppers, along with capsaicin, are very rich in vitamins A and C, which can help boost your immune system. Capsaicin can also boost metabolism and promote weight loss. It's even said that chili peppers can also lower cholesterol and even possibly lower the risk of heart attack and stroke. Capsaicin is also used in several topical pain medications. These medicines can provide pain relief from several different afflictions including arthritis, psoriasis, joint pains, shingles, and more. Though it can come with some small side effects including, of course, a slight burning sensation. So what is the final consensus of spicy peppers? Are they good or bad for you? Well, at the end of the day, they pose no persistent danger to us. As long as you're aware of the side effects and prepare accordingly, spicy peppers shouldn't cause any lasting effects. So go ahead and eat that ghost pepper, rank up those views on YouTube. Just be sure to exercise the proper precautions when doing so. And maybe keep a gallon of milk nearby. Well class, that's the end of today's lesson. Thank you all for tuning in! If you need further assistance, you can find me during my office hours. Your homework is to like this video, Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and share your notes with all your friends. And above all, learn something new every day. Have a great day, students. Until next time, class dismissed.